Hello everyone. We have a bus for sale. <laughs> this is a 2003 7.3 Power Stroke diesel and it is the five window wheelchair door, no rust, and only has 160,000 miles on it. These motors are known to go 500 to a million miles. So this thing hasn't even got broken yet. This has a lot of life left for somebody who's ready to make, start their bus life adventure. And this was also my personal bus for three years, and it was Sculiana. But times have changed, I've decided to move on. And this is a great rig. I built this thing to keep forever. I never intended to sell it. With that being said, I didn't cut corners on anything, and I have the best of everything. We're gonna start with the exterior of the bus. I'm gonna show you the features of that, and then we'll go inside, and I'll show you what I put in there. And let's, let's get started. Okay, so when this bus was Sculiana, it was pretty well known for having a tree line down the side of the bus. I decided to take them off because I felt like they were a trademark of mine. And I want whoever takes this bus to have their own identity and create their own identity as well. When I took the trees off, I decided to paint the exterior of the bus. This has a brand new, fresh paint job, less than two months old. You got another easy two years. And I like to use a semi-gloss paint material. That way if you do scratch it or anything like that, you can choose a rattle can, patch it right in, and you can't even tell. Brand new paint job. Okay, you see this awning up here? That's the biggest, baddest CVT awning that they make. The thing was like $300. It's also got a little LED light in there with a dimmer switch. It's fancy, it's all manual, so there's really nothing that can break. I decided to leave it for the next person who takes this bus. This is a dually, and I put really nice tires on here. These are BF Goodrich KO2s. It's got them all the way around. And the reason I put these expensive tires on here is because this thing is big and heavy, and I get snow in Oregon. I was a little worried about this big, heavy thing being in the snow, and nobody's gonna save me. My buddy is a professional snowboard, or yeah, professional snowboarder. He has this exact same bus. He told me he put these tires on, He's driven through the snow, never needed chains. I didn't believe him. So I put these tires on and I went to a ski resort, tested it out. This thing has better traction than all wheel drive vehicles because of the weight. And then the two tires in the back, this is the safest vehicle to drive in the snow that I've ever driven. If you aren't a snowy like part of the country, like you're solid. All right, so this is the back of the bus and we'll start with the Wee Boost antenna. That is a cell phone booster. I'm always in and out of service, so it's like having that little bit of extra help for getting a phone call out or uploading something is a big deal. And that is the WeBoost XRV, so that is the external antenna that grabs a signal from outside, brings it inside to a router, and has an internal antenna that puts the signal out into the vehicle. And it comes in handy once in a while. Also back here, we do have a backup camera. Sometimes this thing's pretty big. You want to be able to back up and get kind of close and it's hard to tell where you're at in your mirrors. And that backup camera is a big deal for a vehicle like this. Also on the back, we have a custom fabricated ladder. And this thing is made by an awesome fabricator, welded all together. And those are cedar steps all the way up. That takes us to the deck and we will go up there and show you what's going on. Welcome to the top of the deck. This is all steel, t steel that was a frame and it's bolted through the body, so it's not just self-tap. So I had a metal fabricator, fabricator, the same guy that made the ladder made this frame and bolted it through solid. This is about $800 in cedar that I put up here and treated. And then this is custom wood art that my buddy the web maker made for me to inset in in those little spots so that's handcrafted art i also did make a i put a piece of plexiglass in the original emergency hatch and you have skylight so that brings a lot of natural light into the vehicle which is really awesome actually and this thing is never leaked ever sometimes people make those those handmade skylights in their vehicles and they can leak this don't leak so back here also we have 300 watt grape solar panel mounted to the roof made in the USA amazing that brings me to the electrical it has 300 watts on the roof 
It has a 40 amp DC to DC charger, it's a 2000 watt inverter, and then it has a uh, 100 amp hour lithium battery bank. Obviously, I live in the PNW. I see people put crazy amounts of solar on the roof, and then like there's no sun, it doesn't matter. I always think it's, it's, it's awesome to have multiple sources of energy. And so if I do have sun, that 300 watt panel will fill my battery bank in like 10 minutes. I don't need more solar, I want a deck. And also, if I'm under trees or cloud cover and this isn't doing anything, with the 40 amp DC to DC charger, I can just turn the vehicle on, 10 minutes, battery bank's full. Easy, right? Also, I do have a shore power charging port on the outside of the bus too. So like if you're parked somewhere for an extended period of time, like outside your mom's house or something like that, you can just run an extension cord into that and it keeps your battery bank topped off no matter what the sunshine situation is or if you're, sh or if you're driving your vehicle. So you have three ways to charge the battery, the house, the house energy system. I mean, you'll, you'll be fine no matter what your circumstance is. That's it for the deck, and let's go down, and I think we might be going into the vehicle. We'll see. Let's get off the deck, though. Let's talk about heaters. Most people, when they first get into van life or bus life, they have like a Mr. Buddy, right? The problem with the Mr. Buddy is it creates moisture inside the vehicle, gets trapped behind stuff, creates mold. Ask anybody that's actually lived in a vehicle, they'll probably tell you the same thing or they might lie to you. But that's the truth. The new thing on the market right now is $150 Chinese diesel heaters. I think they're fantastic. I installed them in all my new builds now, but they weren't that popular when I built this bus three years ago. I have a very expensive heater here. I have a Propex HS2800, which is a thermostat controlled propane heater. So what that means is you can set the temperature to whatever you want inside the vehicle and it's going to kick on and off to hold that vehicle like a house. Very comfortable. Most people, they are very scared of propane because of carbon monoxide, blah, 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 blah. But this propane heater has exhausts and intakes. So that means none of that stuff is inside the vehicle at all. It's a dry heat, creates no moisture at all. In fact, it dries some of the moisture up. So what it does is it intakes air from outside the vehicle with that, brings it in, uses the propane, combusts, makes the heat, and then the carbon monoxide comes out of this tube right here. So none of it is in the vehicle at all. It's very safe and it's a very efficient heat. The thing about the diesel heaters is sometimes they create buildup and over time you have to clean them, sometimes once a year. So the one downside to the Chinese diesel heaters is every once in a while you might have to, have to replace the whole unit, but it's only 150 bucks. The propane systems, three years. I've never cleaned it. It's clean, it's clean energy, and it, I mean, it's gonna last forever. Intake, exhaust, carbon monoxide out, Propex HS2800, awesome heater. This thing was like $1,000 when I bought it and put it in here. Very nice thermostat controlled heating system in this bus. All right, that is it for the exterior of the bus. And now we're gonna take you inside the bus and show you the features that are in here. Let's go. Okay, when you first come in the bus, the first thing you got is a little shoe rack right here to the left. I had way more shoes than I should have had in here, but this is really nice. This is way, where you can take your shoes off, put them in here, and you're not bringing a bunch of dirt into your living space. Three whole shelves. Over here in the entryway, I did do a little cedar accent here by the doors, and I got a broom right there. It's a handmade broom that's really nice to sweep this place out, keep it clean. And then this is a AFG fire extinguisher. This will self combust. So if I'm not in the vehicle and there happens to be a fire in here, this thing will self detonate and hopefully put the fire out. I haven't tested it because I don't want a fire in here. That's pretty much it for the cockpit area. And then we'll flip this thing around and we'll start showing you the build out. All right, so the first part is kind of the kitchen area and I have a manual foot pump system. I like manual foot pump systems because if something happens to my electrical system, I don't not have plumbing. It's like all self-contained. We have a 14 gallon steel, stainless steel 
holding tank in here and that goes through a water filter comes out through this faucet into this sink I can you can also carry more water in the back if you want to just have extra water storage and then you can just pour it right in here I did it that way on purpose it's just less things to go wrong which if you've ever lived in a vehicle or you know you ever built one like things do go wrong that's why I like all my stuff on separate systems and that is what's going on here and that this is just the holding tank and it also holds uh, your trash can if you want this is the silverware drawer and it's on sliders this is the first drawer on sliders I ever did in my life and I do have a locking system it's a flip lock right here to keep the drawer from coming out while you are driving Moving along, we have a 12 volt fridge. This is a chest style fridge and it is also on sliders and then it just pulls out from underneath the counter and bam, there you go. 12 volt, very efficient. So a few things about the 12 volt chest style fridge. The thing about it is the normal fridges like you see in a house where they open like this, it's letting all, the, all of the coolness out every time it opens right which means the fridge has to work harder to keep it cool right because this thing is only going to kick on when it needs to get it back to temperature so it's not just 50 watts 24 7 it's only 50 watts for two to three minutes here and there to keep it to temperature and then the cooler style holds holds the cold in there so you could just throw ice in here just like a normal cooler so it's it's way more efficient than a front opening refrigerator and i think this is a 43 quart edge star which the name turned to winter and pff, this thing is great I've never had any problems with this thing and then you just you have a strapping lock right here so you can lock it when you're driving I want to talk about the countertop this is a live edge countertop and I think it was um, juniper so it's juniper wood and then it's just epoxied so really good finish on the countertop and we also have another piece of the live edge over on top of the shoe rack this is a two burner oven combo and it is propane it's a camp chef and the two burners and it self ignites and then has a little oven here for when you want to heat up some pizza or make some cookies now underneath that is the toilet the toilet just slides out bam and then you do your business and then you just slide it back in there real simple okay we're going to talk about the lighting in here so as you can see i got twinkle lights twinkle lights everywhere they're amazing for the vibe they're not very good lights for real life <laughs> i have this so this is a 12 volt silicone strip light that i have hung pretty much along this whole side and along the front and like it's during the day right now, so you can't really tell how bright it is, but like, it's, it's plenty of light in here when it's dark outside. And that's just wired to this cool little dimmer switch. You can turn it on or off, on, off, on, and then you can hold it and it will dim. So you can kind of set how much light you want in here, which is real nice. Okay, we're gonna wrap up the kitchen area. Down here, we have carbon monoxide detector, which is good to have just in case, you know, it's carbon monoxide in here not good <laughs> below that we have the the duct for the heater so this is where the heat comes out and you can turn it kind of make it directional but you really don't need to oh boy it, it'll fill this whole space fast and easy and then we do have our 110 strip here and it has a couple usbs there's this strip here and then there is one in the bed area as well so if you're working on the couch doing computer stuff boom you got power 110 right there over here everything's locked obviously and this is the pantry so much space in here i had food in here i forgot about and lost the pantry is huge too big and then we have a mirror here as you can see we have the skylight and the emergency hatch right here and it lets in beautiful natural light uh, I will always have a skylight in my rigs personally 
and it still has the emergency hatch feature where I can open up and get out through the emergency hatch if I need to. And one of the cool things that I discovered living bus life is sometimes when you need to change, there's a lot of windows in here, which I like, but if you want to change, we have this copper rod here, and then you just pull this curtain right here, boom. You can change, do your thing, and then you just pull it back over here, tie it, so it's kind of like a little changing room. It's kind of nice. Ugh. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so this is the garage door. This is underneath the bed. Again, another lock because you want everything to be latched when you're driving. So this thing will open up right here, and then you can get to all the storage underneath the bed, which is a lot. I used to keep my dirty clothes laundry or basket right there. Open this up, throw it in there, done. Let's take you into the bed area and I'll show you around back there. Okay, so moving back here, this is a full size mattress and it's actually really comfortable. It has a box spring kind of built into it, which is really cool. Lots of twinkle lights back here for all them. MTV Cribs vibes, no I'm saying. <laughs> we did the curtains a little different back here because I didn't want to have any light leakage or people like seeing like back here. So they snap around each corner. We have that cedar accent there, some more art, and then we have cedar window frames there just to give it a little more vibe. Curtains everywhere back here. And we also have this trunk here and this is just more storage. All kinds of stuff in there and then over here we have our other 110 outlet and then a 12 volt panel here charge your phone jackery and then it'll also tell you right here the voltage of the battery okay so remember that heater I was telling you about this is the control for it so you just set however hot or whatever that you want your heater and then you just turn this on and then it'll start up and do your thing that's the remote for the lights back here. And then over here, this is our electric panel. So you can see that the battery is at 98%. You can see that we're getting solar and then it's going down to under the bed to where all the electric stuff is at. And it does have a Bluetooth monitor. So you can get on your phone and control the power system and see what you're drawing, etc. And then if you want to use 110, you just hit this switch turns on and then all of the outlets are live all right i think that's it for the bed area let's go finish the rest of this tour this is the closet again latches it's in a vehicle we have these cool little like feather hanger things i just think they really want the vibe in here which i think i was going for like a modern farmhouse kind of vibe when i did, built this built this bus and this is actually cedar fence posts that we use to build that i used to build the door you got these things here for your coats you open this up you have more coat like hanging area here and then you've got humongous shelves like you can fit a lot of clothes and junk in there i had a lot of stuff in there welcome to the couch this is a nice little area just to chill, vibe, look outside. If you don't want to go like lay in your bed, you can entertain guests right here. This does have a scissor system, so it does pull out and lay flat into a guest bed that's just a little bit smaller than a twin. You can fit two people on here pretty easily. And we have a little Pendleton throw blanket over the couch, give a little character. And then we also have these Pendleton throw pillows. And the cool thing about all this stuff is it's reversible. So if you want to be red and black one day, be, you know, PNW vibes, cool. You want to, you know, switch it up, go black and white, you just turn it all over. So you, you kind of get a few different design options here, depending on your mood. And that is pretty much it for the couch. I forgot to talk about what's going on underneath the couch. In this little area, we have a shower pan right here that pulls out underneath the emergency hatch and then you can hang a shower curtain in the emergency hatch and then you can take a shower in that pan in the vehicle in the winter when it's super cold 
This area is a little pull out shower. Over here, just a whole bunch more storage. When you are leaving an apartment or a house or whatever, moving into a vehicle, storage is everything. So you just kind of put it anywhere you can. So now that's it for the couch. One of the other things I want to mention is this bus, when I first got it and pulled the seats out of it, it was like a gray in here. It just, I didn't like it. Colors and light can really affect our mood and did not like the gray. The inside of the bus was completely repainted, sanded down and repainted with a white. So it has a nice bright feeling and light in here. Boom, the inside was painted as well. Also, we have vinyl flooring in here. There is three-in-one sound deadener insulation that I laid underneath the vinyl planking on the floor. And the floor is in the whole bus, underneath the counters, and underneath the bed. Okay, everyone, that is all of the features of this bus. This is a for sale video. This bus is for sale. That's why I did this tour, to kind of do more of the features and less of my story. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to drop a comment below or you can find the listing in the description below for the bus as well and it's a, to recap it's a 2003 7.3 power stroke again those specific motors are some of the most sought after because they go 500 to a million miles this motor only has 160,000 miles on it they're known to not even get broken until 200 this thing's got tons of life left if you want to just hop into bus life, this thing will take you to all the adventures you want and probably a few more people after you. If this bus does sell, I will put sold in the description or the title. If you don't see sold anywhere in the description or the title, this bus is still for sale. Listing in the description. If you have questions, email me, drop a comment. And I really want to see this bus go to somebody awesome. Like, I never intended to sell it. Like I've, I've said it a, a few different times, I built this to keep forever. But you know, times have changed and I just, I wanna do, build something else. There's nothing wrong with this bus at all. If you're sitting here asking yourself why am I selling it, it's personal reasons, not anything else. This is an awesome rig. I wouldn't hesitate to drive it from coast to coast a few, few dozen times. Thank you guys for hanging out watching this video. If you do like bus life stuff, feel free to subscribe because that's all I do on this channel build buses and do bus life adventures. We will see you in the next video. This is Isaac. This was the bus Schooliana. It still is. I'd really love for somebody awesome to buy this thing. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Bye. Hey darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around. Wanna see it now. And get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday